If you want to know how to draw 2D environment assets like these, then you came at the right place. Hello, Kayakus here. Many people ask me how I do my art, so I think it's time to show a little bit how I draw rocks and grass for my games. Why only rocks and grass you might ask? Well, I believe that rocks are most important assets if you want to make any kind of environment. Just look at how many rocks I'm using everywhere. Drawing a rock or stone can seem quite difficult since rocks can come in many different shapes and forms and there is no right way of drawing them. I never understood how people draw rocks like these, like oh some formations and faces should be random since it's nature and stuff, but then how do I shade it if it's random? I have to understand how the object looks in 3D in order to shade it properly. So we are not going to do that since we don't know how to draw properly. My tip is to use the spheres and round objects and remove faces completely. A sphere as an object is probably the easiest thing to shade properly and it's really hard to mess up. And by just moving the light source around you can make the object face different directions and completely ignore all of the problems that come with perspectives, unlike with boxes and faces. If you are like me, you can use spheres and round shapes for all of the assets in your game and never bother with perspectives at all. And it seems that guys from Team Cherry thought the same thing with Hollow Knight, just look how many round shapes are there. So start by making a sketch and a silhouette with a dark color. The sketch is always nice to have, just so that you can orient yourself where the details should be, however if you are feeling like a mad lad, you can skip the sketch and go straight for the silhouette. Also try thinking about these rocks like their environmental parts with which you are going to construct the environment. By this I mean to come up with interesting and reusable shapes like these. For shading with the lighter color, use the textured brush like this one and reduce the opacity. In this way you can cheat a lot of detail without much effort. In case your rock formation consists of multiple smaller rocks, use the eraser to clean up the edges. Make sure that you are always shading first the objects closest to us and then slowly make your way into the back. Otherwise you will have problems when cleaning up the edges. This brush is from a brush pack from Mark Brunet, a cool artist guy who is giving this out for free, so link in the description below if you want to download. If you have trouble figuring out where to put the ambient occlusion and shadows like I do, just add another layer on top, color it black completely, reduce the opacity and use the smooth eraser to erase the important sections of the rock. In this way, the only thing that is left is going to be the ambient occlusion and shadows and you didn't even try to do that. To make this weird shaped object look more like a rock, add cracks using the black color. If you have trouble making straight lines like me, now is your time to shine. Embrace those imperfect lines since it will make it more natural. Now using the overlay layer and white color, add some highlights and make those cracks pop. Now since I think that the rocks are too dark, I'm doing the same thing but for the whole rock, meaning overlay layer and painting with the white color. This always amazes me, but every time I'm not quite happy with the drawing, just add some brightness and contrast and everything looks good all of a sudden. Also feel free to experiment with different colors using hue and saturation component. Another thing that you can add to make your stones even more beautiful is grass. Again, start with the silhouette and try to make it natural, the grass should follow the shape of the rock. Don't think about the details too much for now, this should just be the main shape of the grass. Shade the grass, but now use the softer brush. I use this one which looks kinda like a fog, but you can use whatever you want. Use the black layer again, erase some parts to cheat some shading. Now you are thinking, 
Hey, this doesn't look like a grass at all. And you're right, but we are not done yet. Now merge all of the grass layers into one. If you are scared of merging layers like I am, just duplicate everything and disable it if you want to have some backup. Modify your smooth tool, remove the softness and make it distort 100% of the picture. Something like this. Prepare to lose a piece of your soul and use this tool to make each individual laid of grass. And if you think that this is tedious, just imagine how much I died inside for making this. If you survived through this step, then start erasing the transition between grass and rocks to make it more smooth. And last but not least, add an overlay layer and make some nice highlights with the yellowish color. And that's kinda it. Now you can do what I like the most and that's to experiment with hue and saturation for both grass and rocks in order to get some different results. If you really have patience, you can always add some smaller highlights with the overlay layer. I personally like using the spray paint brush to add some more detail quickly. Don't worry if some of the rocks don't look as good as the others, because it happens to me as well. I would say that the most impossible thing for me personally is to make all of the art the same quality. What I like to do is to draw multiple rocks and assets at the same time. True, not all of them are going to be the best ever, but some of them are going to be amazing. Keep repeating this process until you are happy with the results. You can also draw grass separately from the rocks and have two versions of each rock with and without grass for some more variety when building the environment. I hope this video helped you in some way. If you want to check out these rocks and art style in action, check out my devlogs for Mendasium as well as Ascendum which you can wishlist on Steam right now. And if you want, subscribe to the channel since I will be releasing more videos like this one where I show how some of the stuff in my games is made. That's it for me, I'm done and until next time.